This locker room has been home to championship teams. The building blocks of victory have been formed in this weight room. This field has seen epic games. And our dealership, Dublin Chevrolet, has a great lineup and the winning team. For all your big games, Dublin Chevrolet is your tailgating headquarters. I can save you up to $10,000 off Silverado. Dublin Chevrolet is the only dealer you will ever need. Hello, welcome to At Home in Dublin with Ricky Porter. This is a special and particular television program for TV 35. We interview movers and shakers, heroes and heroines, individuals who make a difference in the city of Dublin. For indeed, we believe that Dublin, our fair city, is a great place to live. And so we try to bring people before you who can tell you the best about Dublin. But we also examine weaknesses and deficiencies. Why? Because we're wanting to make Dublin a better place to be. Today, I am visiting with our new city manager, Mr. Lance Jones. I'm going to refer to him as Lance, and he's going to refer to me as Ricky. Welcome, Lance, to At Home in Dublin with Ricky Porter. Um, hello, Ricky. It's good to be here. And how are you doing? I'm a little nervous about being on television, but otherwise doing fine. But you're not nervous with me? No. Just the television? Just the television. Well, forget about the television for right now. <laughs> And let this be an opportunity for you to shine, for our residents to get to meet you. When I met you, you were the um, city attorney. Right. And so um, perhaps those who met you in that capacity um, may not have been in the best of circumstances. But now as the city manager, you get an opportunity to show, uh, I would say, maybe a brighter, more positive side and spin, possibly. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. I'm yeah, um, still, still dealing with problems, but um, yeah. I'm hoping I'm getting to help people a little more maybe than I was able to as city attorney. Well, because of what you just said, I'm going to ask another question, not one that I had intended. Uh, what are the major problems you're facing thus far as city manager? Getting used to the staff, staff getting used to me as, as the boss. Um, I've been more in an advisory role. Um, I, I hope I keep that part of it up and keep that attitude, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, adjusting, I think adjusting to telling what people to do, you know, telling people to do things is, mm -hmm. is very different. Um, I hadn't been in that role in a while. Um, I've been the on staff city attorney for, for quite a while and just, like I said, giving more advice than uh, telling anybody. Well, anything. let's talk a little bit about that. Before we began the taping, you mentioned that you began your work, I don't know if you began your work in this capacity, but for prior to coming into the position that you're in now, you were the city prosecuting attorney. Correct, in the, in the city municipal court. In the city municipal court. And um, then you segued into the position of city attorney. Right, that's correct. And you also mentioned that the two positions were parallel for a while, the city attorney as well as the city prosecuting attorney? Yeah, I did both for, my, yeah, most of my tenure as city attorney, I've been both. So those are actually two distinct positions? Two different paychecks? No, no. Okay. All one paycheck. Okay, right. So you were basically the city Just attorney that also was did one the work of my of duties was to prosecute in the city court. Did you have a great deal of prosecutions? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of, it's all the speeding tickets, all the, any kind of traffic ticket, uh, mostly is what you'd handle. Um, mm. But any traffic ticket written inside the city, um, the city court handles it. Mm -hmm. And then um, my good friend George Rousseau uh, completed his tenure. And before I begin to talk about your uh, assuming the work of city manager, how is George? Doing very well. <laughs> he's very happy, seems to be. Yeah, just uh, he's enjoying being retired. He's, mm -hmm. uh, he's got a uh, young kid, um, and uh, I think he's, he's doing very well. He I, seems very happy. I saw George, uh, coincidentally, 
about uh, a month ago shopping in Kroger, yeah. and he looked like the happiest man in the whole wide world. Well, I think, yeah, I think uh, uh, being at home with his wife, uh, he's, he's a lucky man. They can be together all day. Mm -hmm. She works at home and uh, um, get along very well. And uh, his son, Hudson, he's just really enjoyed being involved in Hudson's sports and things. So, yeah, I think he's doing, doing great. He golfs a lot. Do you golf, golf also? No, uh, no, I don't. Uh, so you became the interim city manager in November of 2014. Yes. Mm -hmm. And following a uh, broad search, you were one of 40-something some odd candidates for the position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You received the position in July of 2015. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, was there a coronation with a school ban? And did you have mm, no. heads of states coming <laughs> in for... <laughs> No, took uh, took the oath, and uh, um, that was it. Who held the Bible? Um, I can't remember if we had a Bible involved. The uh, judge uh, gave me the oath, and I took over. So, yeah, yeah. Was that? <laughs> t can you recall that moment? It gets a little unclear because I've, as city attorney, you're actually reappointed every year. So, I, yeah, I definitely remember the, my first city council meeting. Um, but I, I've taken that oath. Uh, year after year after times. year. Right. Yeah, to, but the oath of city manager is only once. It's different. Yeah, only right. take that one time. So, so can you recall that moment? Was that, a, was that moment distinct from the oaths of city attorney? Uh, not really? Not really. No, <laughs> I, I think you, you, it's, I mean, it was different. Mm -hmm. You know, different mm -hmm. job, different was, was your family there? Was your family there? Your wife and uh, daughters? No. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving right uh, along. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the work of city manager. Now, just going by the title, one would assume that the city manager manages the day-to-day -day operations of the city. That's correct. Okay. Now, that didn't take much smarts to come up with. So tell me more about the work of the city manager. Well, you, you have to have a, a sort of a general idea of of everybody's job. So you're, but you're obviously not. Uh, I'm not a welder. I'm, I don't know how to lay pipe properly. Um, I don't understand what chemicals exactly go into the sewer system. But your job uh, every day is is to talk with those people, discuss with those people, make sure they're doing their job properly, and. Uh, of course, you, you want to hire the right folks, and I think we've got excellent people in those positions. I've worked with them for years now. But uh, primarily making sure not that they're doing their job, but that they have what they need. To, to get their job done. So could we say that that's tantamount to being the CEO, chief executive officer? That's Yeah, that's, that's basically what the position is. It's CEO of the city, where the uh, mayor might be uh, the, the council would be like the board of directors and the mayor would be like the chairman of the board. And to whom are you accountable? To the mayor and council. The mayor, mayor and council as, as one group, as one entity, group. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are visiting with Lance Jones, the new city manager of Dublin, and we're learning more about that position, and we're learning more about Mr. Jones, whom I call Lance. Where did you get the name Lance? Uh, it's my father's middle name. Your father's middle and name. I think it's my grandmother just liked it. It's not an old family name. And really. since you have three daughters, you didn't pass that name along. Did not pass that name along. Yeah, right. didn't pass that name <laughs> along. Right. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the work of the city manager, particularly um, in light of financial concerns. Uh, why don't you begin by telling me how many? What what is the approximate number of employees? We have as uh, it, city employees. It goes. It averages around 230 to 240. So we have a comptroller or CFO. Who would be the chief? CFO under? would be Joe Kynard, who is the. His title is clerk, but he's the chief financial officer for the city. Okay. And and so how many departments do we have? Oh, number <clears throat> of departments. The several, a dozen. Uh, yeah, there's probably. Yeah. I hadn't really counted them up. There's right, probably right. six, eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you have six department, six or eight department heads. Well, I'm trying to think. No, the, uh, uh, twelve. Okay. So do you, from time to time, have um, 
a meeting with all department heads? Yes, every other Thursday. Every other Thursday. Mm -hmm. And so you sit at the head of the table and you conduct, you moderate that mm -hmm. meeting. And it's, it's very, we, we try to have it each time before the city council meeting. So we go over what the city council is going to talk about. And each department head, a after we've gone over the, the meeting agenda for that the city council is going to go over um, and discuss that, we always try to go around the table and each department head tell everybody else what they're doing in their department so that the city, nobody's isolated. Every department knows mm -hmm. kind of what the other ones are doing mm -hmm. and try to work together. That's the, that's the big thing is try to get everybody working together on the same page. And do you sort of have that um, chemistry now? I believe so. Yes, sir, we do. We, we, our, our department heads are always uh, more than willing, look for ways to try to help each other. So would you say that one of the big differences between your work as city attorney and city manager is the managerial duties, the managerial responsibilities? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. I, which I didn't really have any managerial duties except <clears throat> I, I would be assigned some by George because I was... Uh, not an assistant city manager, but I assisted him in a lot of things. He, mm. he, over the years, we developed a very close working relationship as far as what was going on at the city. We would discuss it uh, more than just from a legal point of view. Mm. Um, so I was, I think that really helped when council looked to appoint somebody new. Mm. That I was already familiar with most everything so, that's going on. So at the, the city, city manager is appointed by the council? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And the city attorney is also appointed by the council? Yes, sir. So who's the new city attorney now? Uh, right now, uh, we just have an interim city attorney, Joshua Kite, and they're fixed to conduct a search for a new city attorney. I know that name, Joshua Kite. Yeah, he's, yeah, I bet you do. He's, he's, uh, works with DDA very closely. Okay. Um, <coughs> he's a fairly low-key, <coughs> not out there, you know, showing off a lot, but he, is, behind the scenes, is working as hard as you can work for the city. Mm -hmm. so. The um, city has also appointed uh, an assistant city attorney? Uh, is that correct? Or is, is that an appointment? or? Well, just no, just just uh, interim city attorney, but an assistant city manager also. Assistant well, I, city manager. Right, correct. Right. Yeah. Is that an appointed position? Uh, no, that's, uh, I would hire that person. So you would hire that person, yes. right. Mm -hmm. And that's um, Tiffany Stanley. Right. No relationship to Deborah Stanley. I d no, I don't think no, they No, no, I'm sure they're not. <laughs> I don't I'm, I'm think they are. I'm going to be interviewing um, both Stanleys um, later in the week. They may be distantly, but not closely, I don't know. No, I don't think they're related at all. <laughs> okay. no, right, right. They're just both African-American women. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is quite innovative for the city. But speaking of innovation, um, do you get a chance to innovate as a city manager, or do you just follow the di directions and dictates of the city council? I think I've got a lot of room to innovate. Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, my job is uh, to carry out the direction. I think they set the general direction. They mm -hmm. tell us which way to go. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's staff's jobs to figure out what steps it takes to get there. So okay. the overall vision, what does Dublin needs to be, what does Dublin need to be in the future needs to come from council, mayor and council. Now, parts of that vision they might, uh, you know, give to us and say, y'all handle how to do this. But, uh, and, I, and I think it's our job, too, to, to point out to them things we see um, uh, that we need to be working toward. That um, perhaps the vision is not as practical, maybe, or something? Yeah. Or it's, maybe the uh, money isn't there? Yeah, well, that's always a problem. That's always a problem. That's always a that's problem. That's always a problem. There, there are so many good ideas, uh, like <clears throat> the river walk is a good example. Yeah, tell me more about the river walk, because, um, as you know, I pastor a church, and my um, church and the congregation is in that vicinity. What, what's, uh, so there's been conversation about the river walk, um, I know we have a river walk in Savannah, correct? Oh, yes, yes. And yes. there's a river walk in Brunswick, maybe? Uh, the, I think Brunswick has something along. Augusta does, right. Columbus so, does. Right. So what is it um, that we're talking about here in Dublin? Uh, it, it, we've broken it up into phases. Overall, the project would go from uh, the current part at Roaches that people need to remember it's there. That's a public park. You can park at Roaches and go on the river um, 
you know, along there and enjoy that park. And what did you mean but, by a public park? Roaches? Uh, next to uh, Roaches there where they have their, their home and garden. Correct. Okay. Between their parking lot and the river is a oh, city park. I didn't know that. It's, it's beautiful. It's a fantastic place, especially if the weather's nice. Go. Go and enjoy it. Um, the weather's nice now. Uh, there are benches there. Um, we actually have an amphitheater there. Somebody wanted to schedule really? an event. It's wonderful. People just forget it's there. But it's uh, it's high bluff on the river. We keep the grass cut. It's 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 a beautiful place. It's just so a great. I know where Roaches the store is located. Right. So this thing that you're talking about, this is adjacent to it, right. perpendicular but to it. It 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 separates them from the river. Is that it's, right? That, the, all of that along there. It's a wonderful spot. Um. And and we need to use that more. But people don't like I said people. Need to need to go. You don't realize it's there, but the uh, what we plan to do is extend that from there all the way down the river to the golf course as a park. The um, Riverview Golf Course. The Riverview Golf Course. And I'm going to look at the camera and go yes. to Riverview, play golf. <laughs> it's much improved. I think you'll be surprised. Need to come out and play play golf with us. Now you did um, that very well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm serious. We, we, we're, put, we're putting a lot of, uh, lot of effort. I know we're getting a little off the point. No, there, we're but, not. Um, getting off the point of, of the river, river walk. walk part, but the golf course is going to be the other anchor for it. So there's going to be uh, money invested in the golf um, course to improve we it? Are, yeah, we're spending a lot of extra money right now on the golf course to get it to, to it's golf uh, we're looking at golf is never going to be a money making thing for the city of Dublin, but it's an amenity just like we don't expect to make money off softball or kids playing soccer. Correct. We don't expect to make money off of golf, but uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for the community that maybe doesn't want to join the country club, can't afford to drive a long way to another golf course. We have a well, it, it amazes me the goodwill, how much people love Riverview Golf Course. I'm not a golfer, as I said, so I, I wasn't really expecting it. But people mm -hmm. are just so excited that we're down there working and getting the golf course in good shape. Mm -hmm. Steve Brown's the new director. Mm -hmm. If you haven't played there, <laughs> like I said. I think you're liking this. <laughs> I, I am liking this. Go see Steve, meet Steve. Play the golf course. You'll you'll be surprised. And give us the feedback. If, if I mean, we need feedback on it. We Very need good. to know uh, what still the problems are. But uh, he said he just had a tournament, and for the first time, he got no suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's uh, yeah. C please come play. I, I'm going to say that every time you give me a chance. To. Oh, well, I'm going to give you a chance again. <laughs> okay. We are visiting. <laughs> we're visiting with Lance Jones, our new city manager. He's talking about getting feedback. Well, we need your feedback also at TV35, and later we'll tell you how to give us your feedback. But right now we're visiting with um, Lance Jones. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns about our fair city, um, this is the man that you'd make contact with, and um, you'll get a chance to know him a little bit better by being attentive to this program. So you are you an attorney, a graduate of Mercer University? That's correct. Right, yeah. Um, I know several people have graduated from Mercer. Um, now, is Mercer not a United Methodist affiliated school? It, it used to be a Baptist affiliated used to be a Baptist school. Baptist affiliated now, affiliated they school. might have. Uh, I think it's still a Baptist school, but they've broken with the Southern Baptist Convention. Oh, maybe. okay, okay. Do you go back very much? Not very often. No. Mm. I'm not a very good, uh, I, I've Alumnus. never been real good at keeping up with, well, going back to yeah, the neither old school. I, yeah, I, I kind of yeah. graduate and I'm gone. Yeah, 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 that's <laughs> me too. Uh, there's a question that I have for you, and I, I wanted to ask this question earlier, but I, I didn't because we got started with something else. I'd like to know what you bring to the position as city manager that you take from your work as the city attorney, meaning all that you learned from that position, all that you've understood about our city. What, what do you bring with you? 
I, I think it gives me a, a, a perspective as far as the risk management, perhaps, um, uh, from looking at things from the legal side, uh, you know, attorneys are bad, always you're looking at the worst thing that can happen. So mm -hmm. I think that gives me, uh, like you said, Lance, should we uh, put, uh, let's build an ice skating rink. You know, my first thought is people breaking their legs. So yeah. It's got to be safe. You know, we, if we're going to do this thing, we've got to make it safe. So I think uh, coming from an attorney's perspective, uh, looking at things from, from, from that side, uh, I, I think I bring that to the city. There are a lot of things, legal things, that I know that I understand about hiring, firing, um, that maybe a, uh, a new city manager, somebody just starting out, would not understand. Mm -hmm. um, I think my, I've always been more a, um, more on the problem solving side of the law and not the let's jump in and sue each other and fight side of the law. I did a lot of real estate. Um, worked in the DA's office. I had a broad practice, did divorces, everything you can think of. But I think I've always been more attracted to the less uh, confrontational, beating each other over the head. More side. of a mediator. More, yeah, more of uh, let's get together and solve a problem. And I, I think that's how I really try to look at things for the city when somebody calls with a problem, not figuring out who's right. I mean, there, that's a big part of, of the law is figuring out who's right. But a lot of times I learn, you know, there are a lot of gray areas also. Mm. So um, not figuring out who's right and wrong, but figuring out a solution to the problem. Um, the city's budget is public information, correct? Right. Mm. So what is the fiscal year for the city? Uh, July. It always starts July 1st and goes to the end of June. Okay. And so we have a new budget in place now for 2015, 2016. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what is the city's budget roundabout? Uh, about $42 million, I believe, mm. this year. Mm. And um, your job is to make sure that every penny is spent properly? And, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and you work and closely with the CFO, the ch city finance officer? And a budget, it's... It's, you know, a budget's a budget. It's just like your home budget. So we set the budget, but we never know what's coming. So it's a, it's a, it's a real challenge sticking to the budget. You know, we've passed this document. This is the way council wants us to go. It's the way the citizens want to go. But dealing with unexpected things that come up that you have to spend money on mm -hmm. and, it, and that you really can't, you budget some money, or the unexpected, but it's never enough, you know. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, a road that you thought was going to be okay develops bad holes, and so you need to change your paving list. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a myriad of things happen. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to, one thing I really want to concentrate on is, is doing more preventive maintenance, putting more money to that side. And, and really, the number one thing in the budget that's going to change, it's not the big change this year, but it's going to be next year, is putting more resources to doing away with dilapidated housing in the city. Yeah, I've heard a great deal about that. Um, is there an official program germane to this? Uh, we're working on it. One thing we want to do is land bank. Uh, it, other towns have it. If, if you're not familiar with it, it's good to go on the internet, sort of see what they're about. Um, but it gives the city a mechanism um, that we can set it's an independent thing from the city, but we'd work closely with them. Hopefully they'll work closely with the housing authority to improve housing in Dublin. Hmm. But I think our, the, the first thing we need to do is really get the resources necessary to get rid of... Dilapidated you ride, houses. Dilapidate, you can ride through any neighborhood in Dublin and there are good houses and bad houses. Correct. And you can ride through the worst neighborhood in Dublin. You, you pick it out. You pick out where you think the worst house houses are, right. you ride down that street and there, there are houses that are neat as a pen. People who keep their yard better than I've ever thought of keeping my yard. And those people deserve uh, the best neighborhood they can be in. Correct. And I think if we can start there, I think, you know, Dublin has problems. We've mm -hmm. got a lot of great things going on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we can't just concentrate on the great things. We've got to look at the problems too. And uh, we've done a great deal with downtown. 
And I think we've done a wonderful thing with downtown. And I, I think it's, and it keeps improving, and we want to keep working on downtown. And would you give the credit to that mostly to the downtown development agency? Is that what it's called, downtown development oh, agency? Oh, goodness, credit. I'm going to get somebody mad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to get anybody I, angry. The, the DDA has done a fantastic job, but I want to give, of course, I work for council, so I'm going to give them plenty of credit, too, because now they really, where it started was with city council saying um, we're going to redo the central part of downtown. Um, the, and, and the DDA at the time, my, my sister-in-law, uh, my brother's wife, um, Kathy was, I believe, on DDA then. That DDA board then, but just everybody working together. DDA I hate being to say, downtown development agency. Uh, authority, authority and then the Main Street okay, person. Right. Mm. And I hate, to, I hate to point out anybody and say that Correct. person or those people because it was a huge effort and a lot of money spent by the city. Um, DDA especially uh, in the last few years has really been a driving force in mm. keeping the focus down. But it sounds like you're wanting to lead in another direction too. Another group was also instrumental? Well, the, uh, the city council. City council. The city, so, uh, so city council had the vision. Right, city council, and it's just a collaborative effort between the city council, the DDA, and a lot of but, other folks. But is and, the uh, DDA Bradshaw, is DDA uh, appointed by city council? Uh, board members are, and then the board members and uh, uh, the board members hire the director um, and the folks that work okay. for them. So, like Joshua Kite, who we were Correct. talking before. Tremendous vision for downtown. Who's our new city attorney? Interim city interim city sort of serving as interim city attorney. Okay. Tara Bradshaw doing a great job uh, seeing what needs to be done, implementing those things. Um, city council, the mayor, um, you can't find a bigger downtown supporter than the mayor. He oh, lives yeah, downtown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Works downtown. He's after us all the time about keeping up with downtown. Now, our job now, we, and we keep, we're going to keep working on downtown and make sure it continues to get better. Correct. But we've also got to look around downtown and work on everything else. We okay. can't let the rest of Dublin go down on no, the concentration on downtown. I'm certain we won't do that. So downtown is kind of the centerpiece, the showpiece. Correct. It's kind of like your house. You you, you got the living room fixed up for mm, guests, right. but you want the rest of it to look really nice because it's the place you live. Very good. So we got to get in those neighborhoods where we've got houses <laughs> looking bad and Get them looking back. So we have a city manager who is poetic with metaphors. Oh, no. Downtown is the living room. Okay. okay right here. <laughs> We're meeting with Lance Jones. <laughs> We're meeting with Lance Jones, our city manager. We only have a few minutes left, and I'm going to give you an opportunity, Lance, to speak directly to the TV35 audience and <laughs> give us your... Your number one concern about Dublin, I, I think I'd like for you to preface with that, because you mentioned that we have problems. I don't want to hear about all the problems, but what would you consider, in your opinion, at this early date in your career as city manager, um, our most pressing problem? And then I'd like for you to conclude by giving us your vision about um, how we move Dublin um, in the near future and making it um, an even more attractive place to be. Um, I've never been accused of being a poet before, so <laughs> um, I think our. Let me start with the problem. I think that's the order you ask. You. Our number one problem is, I believe, dilapidated housing. Mm. I think that really is the problem. Now we can always go back, and uh, you know, it, it seems like every discussion you start if it ends up. Well, if we can only make people better parents, so Correct. that's we're not going to start down that road. But the uh, if we can get the, our housing situation fixed in Dublin mm -hmm. to where young people are wanting to move into these neighborhoods, we got a lot of places that could be fantastic neighborhoods for starter, just out of school. Correct. First home time First home, buyers. You're, you're moving out of that rental situation. Mm -hmm. You want to move into a home ownership situation. Right. Young white collar, young blue collar folks, neighborhoods to move into. I, I, I grew up in town and, and I've lived in the country and I, I love both. But the great thing about town is you get in a neighborhood with a bunch of young couples 
Yeah. All the kids can play together. A lot of energy. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and you can walk to where you want to go. I used to ride my bicycle to the, to the Elks Club pool. I used to ride my bicycle to the library. Those are the great things that we're going to miss out if everybody moves out of town. We've got mm. all this infrastructure. We've got these things here. My goal is to, is to get this housing situation, and then people have to do it. You know, you have to decide to do it and come back and, and be with everybody and be part of it. But that we've got to create a Dublin where people are excited and ready to come back and do that. And I think TV 35 is doing its part on making um, Dublin more exciting. That's why we have you on the air, and that's why we have this program. So the, a number one problem, um, a challenge, is dilapidated houses. Now, what is the best in terms of what platform are you using as what's good about Dublin that relates to your vision about making Dublin even better? Uh, I, I, I'm, without a doubt, I know it sounds like I'm sucking up, but it's the people that live here. No, it's it sounds the, like you are I, pleased about I, our it's city. It's the people that live here. That if, if, if we didn't have good people living here that, that honestly mm -hmm. love Dublin, uh, love this city, love each other, want it to be the best town in the state, uh, everything else, uh, we, there's, there's nothing you could do. We could build all the greatest houses in the world and it still wouldn't be worth living in. Um, but with the people we have here of goodwill, I, I, I was just thinking about our, our uh, um, Keep Dublin Beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's called Keep Dublin Beautiful. We all need to have the attitude that we're going to make Dublin beautiful. Everybody needs to get out there and, you know, what, look around your neighborhood. What can I do? Uh, the city can, can help you keep your neighborhood in good shape um, and, and uh, try to keep yards cut. and try, But it's the citizens that live here that have to come together, look at their neighbor and say, we care about this place. Mm. You know, hey, I, I want to know you. I want, I, want, I want your yard to look good. I want my yard to look good. I want your kids to come back and live here. You know, and, and we've got to do that together. Or um, what is it we... We, we, uh, we either stand together or perish in separate houses. That's okay. I, was, <laughs> I, I know that up. <laughs> I think it works. <laughs> we have been visiting with Lance Jones, our new city manager. I want you to pray for him, and I want you to call him and give him a pat on the back. He's a good man, and he's good for our city. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank it's been you, good Rick. to have you with At Home in Dublin with Ricky Porter. <laughs> <laughs> Play at the golf course. <laughs>